So this video is going to be a little bit unscripted, a little bit off the rails, a little bit, I don't know, whatever you want to say, but don't feel like you have to pay attention to the background footage or anything like that. It's just basically going to be me getting slowly but surely acclimated to the 3U hunting horn going against Great Roggy and it's like low rank. So if you just want to throw this on in the background, uh, all that whatnot, perfectly fine. So what I wanted to talk about is something that has kind of been going on for a little while, ever since Even World came out. There's been a little bit of a drive that's been being pushed down between the community, and you have the term world babies for people that kind of started with Monster Hunter World and their entry into the Monster Hunter series. And then you kind of have the boomer hunters that are kind of like, you know, the for you lovers and pretty much anything that was like on the mobile, the 3DS and switch titles and this and that so it's kind of like there is a little bit of a drive that's been going on for a little while but it seems to be picking up a little bit more steam now the whole term world baby like i said is somebody that first started with uh, monster hunter world as they're entering into the series i'm one of those people actually but the connotation of a world baby is kind of surrounded by the fact that any game other than Monster Hunter World or Iceborne or something, the, the people tend to think that that is the best Monster Hunter and a lot of the times people think it's, you know, people who are newly coming into the franchise that think that and all this whatnot. Believe me, those kind of people exist, but there's also the opposite end as well, the boomer hunters and stuff like that, that pretty much anybody that started with World or anybody that thinks that World and Iceborne are the best entries in the series, that it's just because they're a world baby and they don't know what they're talking about, whatever. But this is just a perfect representation of like the climate that we live in today. There's no more room for like discussion and discourse like that doesn't even exist anymore. It's strictly like my team against yours and how this has kind of been formulating in the Monster Hunter community is world versus pretty much anything else. And right now, in this moment, it's pretty much Rise versus Worldborn. And it's gotten to the point where people are just like blatantly overlooking things and only focusing on things that amplify their stance or like bolsters their side of the argument. World Babies will overlook that Rise released during a pandemic. So, of course, they had to do that update 2.0, update 3.0 system. But I mean, it, you have to realize that they had a plan in place and then obviously things changed for everyone and then they had to release it this way. Not only that, but we also have the limitations of the Switch and the fact that Worldborn was on the more powerful consoles and on PC. So I mean, obviously there's gonna be some discrepancies and some restrictions when it comes to Rise and how well it plays or it looks or this or that. Because let's be honest, I mean, Rise is still a very very good looking game, especially when you're talking about Switch games, easily one of the best looking ones by far. Now that's not to say that this is all one sided and it's just World Baby saying this or that or dogging on Rise, because we have the Boomer Hunters as well that talked about how World catered too much to the player and it was easy, but you'll see that those same people won't say that about Rise, when I think that most of us can agree that as far as the titles in the Monster Hunter franchise, Rise might be the easiest, if not one of the easiest entries, and it's very much streamlined. So you're going to see people saying that, like the boomer hunters that I was talking about. You'll see them saying that about Worldborn, but then they're kind of silent on that front when it comes to Rise. And that's what I tried to make it clear to everybody, even if you were one of these uh, boomer hunters that... Like when Worldborn was coming out uh, and it wasn't on like any of the mobile devices or Switch or whatever, hoping for that game to fail hurts the Monster, fr Monster Hunter franchise as a whole. And that goes for the world babies and stuff that we're kind of hoping that Rise would fail or whatever just because it was a Switch exclusive and that it wasn't coming to the consoles. And if Rise wouldn't have done well, it would have been bad for the future of Monster Hunter 2. If Worldborn hadn't done as well as it did on the consoles and PC, Rise would not have sold as many units as it did. Period. That's just a fact. It introduced a lot of people into the series for the first time, and it got people, including myself, to get a Switch specifically so I could play Rise when it came out. 
But that just plays back into what I was saying about my team versus your team, that people were actually kind of hoping for these games to fail when it just would have been bad for everyone. Speaking back towards the bias that we all kind of have and how we've split up into teams, I know that a lot of people were talking about the Rise Endgame content and how it's kind of lacking. And while I kind of agree in the sense of Apex monsters and how they don't really have much of a point outside of getting materials for like the Rampage weapons, Base World really didn't have much of Endgame content either. I mean, we had a similar system to where like we had the Tempered monsters and gathering the soul stones and all that whatnot. I mean, it's very similar to what's going on in Rise right now. And I tried to warn people about comparing uh, Worldborn and Rise way back because we're comparing Rise, the base game, to Iceborne, the expansion. So of course there's going to be a lot more end game stuff to do and just things to carry over and make you come back and play Iceborne. But Rise is a base game right now. Once it gets that expansion, the ultimate expansion, G-Rank expansion, whatever you want to call it, then we'll have a better situation to compare the games. Because like I said, Base World had a little bit of a problem with the tempered monsters like we do in Rise right now. It's where we were just getting materials to kind of like minimally improve this or that. Not until they brought in like the arc tempered monsters that actually brought in new armor sets did it feel more fulfilling. And I really do. I think that if Rise, if they just kind of did that or put an update out that like gave us something like Apex Armor or especially weapons, that'd be fantastic. And I feel like a lot of people would be a bit more happy with the state of Rise right now. But that's what I'm saying is that Base World had this problem and then it eventually got fixed. So we never know. It might get fixed in an update or it might have to wait until the expansion. But this is one of those examples that I was talking about that people will overlook things just to bolster their point. And this wasn't one-sided, like, and it still isn't. The Boomer Hunters, how they talked about how Worldborn was too easy and that it catered to the Hunter. I mean, that's very much happening with Rise right now. And you'll see some of the people kind of being silent about that because then that would be detrimental to their point and their stance. Because it is, it's true. Rise is one of the easiest games in the Monster Hunter franchise. I mean, the hunters got buffed like Longsword, while the monsters kind of got treated like pre-Rise Hunting Horn. We have so much that we gained as hunters, and the monsters gained pretty much nothing. For example, I mean, mounting was already a powerful tool. Now we get to mount the monster and beat the crap out of them with another monster, while still being able to do things like wall bangs and all that so I mean it feels like we got so much as the hunters and the monsters are at a huge disadvantage now and I do I think that this is a legitimate gripe when it comes to people talking about rise the fact that it's a little bit too easy because I mean you even look at the apex monsters they don't feel like the deviants do in generations ultimate and even the advanced quests that were implemented not really as hard as you would expect like something like a gen U or even a for you and I do, I think that people would be very much more happy or satisfied with Rise as well if they found a way to just bump up that difficulty because Base World had that problem. Even Tempered Monsters and stuff like that, they just weren't hard enough. But then when we got things like Arc Tempered uh, Nergagante or Xenojiva, all of those guys, even recently like the Namiels and like the Tempered Ruiner Nergagante, when the difficulty increases, you will find that people are going to enjoy the game more. But to kind of come full circle with everything, I mean, that's just how it is. People are going to acknowledge points that bolster their stance and then just overlook others that don't. You have the world babies that we're kind of talking about, Rise's endgame content and it being lacking and this and that, when that very same thing happened with World at its base, and then it got approved upon in the expansion. And that very easily could be the case in Rise, but you don't see people acknowledging that. And then in the same sense with like the Boomer Hunters talking about how Worldborn and World in general was too easy, but then they'll very much overlook how easy Rise is and how it needs that difficulty boost as well. And now before you call me a Capcom shill or this or that, or that I'm defending Rise, 
Rise is probably my least favorite of the entries that I've played so far. If I really had to rank things, I would probably say Generations Ultimate has been my favorite, and then I'd probably have to say For You and Iceborne are pretty much tied, and then probably Rise. I haven't played 3U enough to really generate an opinion on that yet, but it's definitely going to be high up there. But like I said, I'm defending Rise because people are overlooking these things that need to be taken into consideration when we talk about Rise in its current state. And speaking of Capcom shills, Gaijin Hunter. People are really out here calling Gaijin Hunter a Capcom shill and this and that because he is defending Rise for some of the points that I talked about and I mean, honestly, do I think that Gaijin is a Capcom shill? Absolutely fucking not. He has been one of the most critical people in any of the entries in the Monster Hunter series. He has picked out all of the criticisms and things that were lacking in some of the games and even in Rise, I know that specifically he talks about the event quest and how lackluster they are. But what happens is Gaijin his criticism isn't like in an asshole kind of tone or anything like that and it's constructive so people tend to look at that as him not being hard enough on the game or this or that just because his tone isn't savage or like I said he's not being an asshole so people think that it's not hard enough. And it got to the point where he felt the need to kind of let out a video clarifying his points and his his thoughts on the current rise state and whatnot, which is unfortunate. I myself, I honestly, I wish he wouldn't have put it out because he had absolutely no need to explain anything. It was clear how he felt about the game and that he was not being any kind of Capcom shill or anything close to it. Now, do I think that there might be a little bit of bias or inherent bias with Gaijin when it comes to Rise? Absolutely. I want you to take a second. Okay, so you're a content creator and something that you've devoted so much of your life, time, and energy to, Monster Hunter. This game is fantastic. The franchise is fantastic. But now, enter in your daughter and she finally gets into the series that you have been putting all this time, blood, sweat, and tears into and she absolutely loves it. How are you not gonna have any kind of bias as a human being with that? That's the thing though, is that bias inherently is not bad. What you have to do though is know that you have that bias, recognize that, and then realize that other people have that too. Because that's the thing is that I guarantee you if you ask Gaijin, he will be the first to tell you that yes, he probably is gonna have a, a bias towards Rise, because him and Yuna are getting to go on this journey together and he's having a blast and so is she. But that's the thing is that once you finally realize that you do have that bias and accept it, then you can actually have that discourse and actually be able to talk without things getting heated or toxic or any kind of stake being driven in the middle of the community and we don't have to split up into these teams. But if you want to hold on to your biases, if you want to stay on your side of the aisle or on your team and want to hope for some entry in the Monster Hunter franchise to fail just so you can say I told you so, that's cool. I mean, do your thing. I myself am going to be over with a majority of the community being Team Monster Hunter and enjoying every game in the franchise some more than others but really appreciating each game for its strengths and having a good time but yeah i mean that's about it for this one guys um it was just kind of something that i have been seeing grow over time and just kind of wanted to put my thoughts out there on it um same things as usual in the description if you want to join the discord by all means uh, if you want to support the channel those links are there as well but yeah i know that stories 2 is going to be coming out tonight so i'll be streaming that as well if you want to catch it and yeah i will see you guys in the next video